wonderful people, great dear friends, wherever you are on the face of this very planet Earth. Once again, we welcome you to our live and hopefully interactive session this very day, this very evening of the 23rd of February in the year of Almost High Elohim 2021. The time now is 12 minutes past 7 p.m. in the blessed land of Biafra and the same number of minutes past the top of the hour, regardless of where you are. That is to notify everyone who is listening that this is a live presentation, not a replay. Mm -hmm. How do you know it is a live recording? Is because of the time. Anytime we start our program, we remind you of the time. Because, of course, we do repeat most of our programs uh, of unedited. So if you do listen to this program later on, if the time where you are is not 12 minutes past the top of the hour, then you know that you are listening to a repeat broadcast. I welcome each and every one of you, regardless of where you are. And as I welcome you, please allow me to also urge you to welcome all those who are around you. We are live and we are direct and the entirety of humanity is paying attention to what we are doing and this very evening, of course, it gladdens my heart that a lot of people are now repenting from their old ways. They have now come to embrace the truth, which IPOB have for long represented. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night to each and every one of you. Because unlike any other, this very broadcast simulcast on almost five platforms. We are on FM, we are on satellite, we are on social media, be it Facebook, we are also on Twitter. We are on Radio Biafra Community App. We are also on Radio Biafra App. Some may live, want to listen via tuning, sweet radio, just name it, we are everywhere. And that is why the propagation of this very gospel is unstoppable. It doesn't matter what the enemies do. It doesn't matter what they will continue to do. We remain resolute. We remain unflappable. We remain determined. We remain unbreakable. And that is why we do not retreat nor surrender. That is why today the philosophy of, I of IPOB, this very ideology we have preached for years, is now holding sway right across the length and breadth of the damnable zoological republic. As always, my name is Nnam Dekano. I am the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, the director of Radio Biafra and Biafra Television, and by the very special grace of the Most High Elohim, Chukwakeka Biyama a servant of the wonderful people of Biafra. I did promise you that I will broadcast every two days because there is need for people that inhabit that damnable zoological republic to understand that their lives are in peril. And together we are going to do whatever it will take to ensure that we save as many souls as possible. That is why we are here and that is why we ceaselessly continue to preach this very gospel of redemption. But first of all, we must pray before I bring to you what we have in store for you this very day. But I will pray, of course, in the language of heaven. The also says it like a manke plumi yani na yani nefe wena kaza hanso yam bini ne. Chine kena manke ndibo. Ona bana ne abu malite no soto. Ona ni jamo no ni jani isi ni jamo jikra blaze bube. Ona bana ne kani jamo no. Nihine <laughs> Yan is a honan and better than one and one knows in that in Gossip. The Aqua is a good one, yeah, but Kiss away, did you hear anything in the one you know, but in Keta? How when they are no one, I can say how we are home, the Bucky was here to us, but in Gossip. Yaki with this Asia, all Luaka Honey, 
we must pray in the language of heaven because that is the same language that the angels are using when they bow before the throne of the almighty in heaven we are going to preach this gospel today as you may have noticed my voice is very calm I want you to get your pen and paper ready. Abandon every vestige of greed, envy, and jealousy. That's your I do know brain. I know everything. Put it to one side for the next hour or two. Things were a bit shaky, but we, we are, are hopefully we are back once again. Back please. Once again. We are back once yeah, again. All the can to disrupt we us. We are back once to again to stop us from spreading this very gospel of redemption. But we are back here live and direct once again, and I believe that all our platforms are working. There are those that have taken it upon themselves to inform me each time that there is a wobble. I need to know that all our systems are working very well. I want to know that all our systems are fully operational. Very, very important, please. Our enemies will try all they can to distract us. Please, I do need confirmation that all our systems, that our output from here is working very well. That is what I want to know, please. Very, very critical, please, that I get this confirmation. Is anybody able to confirm with me? Even if it, yes, we are okay. We are okay. Somebody saying we are okay. I can see most of the comments. I think it's on Facebook. And um, Natabugo is listening to us on Twitter via my Twitter handle at Marzin and the Kano. Uh, yes, they, I don't know if they have fixed it. Uh, I don't, I have, we have fixed it, of course, here. Yes, they can now hear me. It is now working. Thank you very much. The BC, thank you very much, all of you. Uh, Donatius Sinkem, thank you very, very much. Chiame Okoro said, yes, that it is now working. It is now working. So we are live and we are direct. Once again, it is very clear. And the whole world, they don't want me to preach this gospel because they know what it contains. 
I call it the, <laughs> the end of discussion. After this very program this evening, the people will begin to have a more deeper appreciation of the enormity of the task that is before us and what we are doing to rectify the uselessness that Nigeria has become. We must preach. First of all, this very evening, morning, afternoon, and depending on where you are, there is no country, nation, or geopolitical space on this earth where a black man is in control of his life, talk less of his destiny. I want you to write this thing I'm saying down, please. Very, very critical. You write it down because what we are going to do, as always, is to try to build a very necessary preamble, lay the foundation upon which we are going to rest our lecture this very evening, this very gospel from heaven. I repeat, and I'm saying there is no country or nation on this very earth where a black man is in control of his life, talk less of his destiny. I know some of you may mention Barack Obama, that he was the president of the USA, but during Obama's reign in the USA, black people were more disadvantaged than at any time in U.S. history. Had Obama's reign in America, or should I say his presidency, been a success, you won't have issues like Black Lives Matter. Black Lives Matter because racist, white police people in America we are slaughtering blacks at will. That is after a black man can become the president of the United States of America. Why I'm saying that is for you to grasp the essence of the point that I'm trying to make. That there is no country, nation, or geopolitical space on this very earth where a black man is in control of his life. And I'll bring that to the zoo very, very shortly. Sometimes I, I, can, I wonder if God created us or uh, God made we black people and handed us over as slaves and farm animals to serve other races. That is why anywhere you go around the world, once you are black, you are very close to the rock, to the dustbin. Do you know they have a caste system in India? Do you know the lowest caste in India are black people? Do you know in Sri Lanka they have a caste system? Do you know that the lowest caste of people, they are black people? Do you know that black people are also suffering in Papua New Guinea? Do you know that they are at the bottom of the pile? I am saying all these things so you understand why these criminals, these vultures, these workers of iniquity are all against Biafra. The simple point I'm trying to make. Because when people are down, you need a force, you need a movement, you need a figure, you need a people to raise everybody up. When Asia was down, it fell upon Japan to lift the whole of Asia. When the Western world was down, it took the grit and the mind of the United States of America to grind through the Second World War and still be able to rebuild Europe. Europe was rebuilt with money from the United States of America. Nobody's doubting that. At every period in history, you have always needed a race or a people to stand up and say, or to say enough is enough. It has fallen upon our generation. This very generation of IPOB, and we are saying enough is enough. And of course, and very predictably, we are encountering stiff opposition because the devil doesn't want Biafra to come. The devil doesn't want Biafra to come because the devil enjoys it because black lives do not matter. Because all over the world, there is no place, there is no country where a black man is in control, or black people for that matter, man and woman, even black dog is in control of their lives. I want you to understand that challenging this very prevailing orthodoxy is the reason why we have so many people within and without against this very promise of God. The same thing happened to Israel. 
Nobody wanted the Jews to have their own homeland. Nobody wanted them to have it. Even before time, even to leave Egypt and go. They are complaining of exactly the same thing happening in the zoo because I don't know, for some inexplicable reason, I am in a spiritual mood this very week. For some reason, the same thing that happened to Israelites are happening to us. If you go to the northern part of the zoological republic, they are complaining. They are everywhere. These Easterners, these Biafrans, these Ibo people, they are everywhere. They own the, they own the shops, the businesses, and everything. There is envy and jealousy. We want them to go. We don't want them in our land. The same thing that Pharaoh said. We don't want Israelites in our land. But to allow the Israelites to go was a problem. The same thing happened in Nigeria. You are complaining every blessed day, and we are saying allow us to go, and you're saying no. The same biblical scenario being played out in a contraption created by man in Africa in the 21st century. How abominable can that be? I want people to listen very carefully. I am not going to be very fast. I want you to absorb all that I have to say this very day. It's very, very critical to do so. A black person has no pride. The reason why I am throwing this line this evening is because I want you to understand the genesis of your problem. Black people do not have any shame. They have no pride. They have no class. They have no sense of decency. Why am I saying this? I know some people are grumbling already. They're saying, oh, why he's insulting black people? No, I'm not insulting you. I want you, I want you to be able to reason. I want you to reason very, very clearly, please. Do you know why I say you have no shame, black people? If you had any shame at all, there is no way any white man can travel up to 4,000 miles and come to your land and take away your name and give you his own name. Do you want me to repeat what I said? Let me tell you why black people are suffering, why we are the lowest of the low. Why anywhere we are in the world, people treat us as if we are trash, basically. It's because we have no regard for ourselves. We have no pride. We have no honor. We have no dignity. Can you tell me why any sensible black person, any sensible human being who would call himself a Nigerian? Can somebody please explain that to me? Did you create Nigeria? The answer is no. And now, the other uh, part of the coin is, can you go, the person that came and created Nigeria, can you go to his village and create, uh, let's say, uh, Ududua or Hausa in that place? The answer is no. They came to our land. They took away the name Yibwacha. They named it Port Harcourt. Some of you are shouting for every day, Port Harcourt, Port Harcourt. And I'm asking you, look at yourselves and what you're doing. Do you think you have any shame in you at all? Because if you had any shame, if you had any honor, you would have done at least what the Indians did. They changed all the names back to what they were before the white man came. And do you think you can go to Liverpool and rename that very beautiful city of Liverpool into anything else from Africa? Do you think the people of Liverpool will even listen to you? They will see you as a madman. Now I'm asking you, why should we in Africa accept it? Somebody will travel for thousands of miles, come into your land and tell you that your ancestors, your grandfather, your great-grandfather, your great-great-great-grandfather, that they had no history. In one stroke of the pen, your life all of a sudden started in 1960. In 1960, your essence as a human being started. Tell me any sensible country in the world where the president is older than the country itself. And then the, the sensible question that any right-thinking human being should ask is this. What was my history before the creation of this thing you now say is my history? Simple research we do not do. Because had black people been engaged in very rigorous research, they would have a sense of pride and dignity. Even Native American Indians, they have dignity and pride. Europeans wanted to convert them to slaves, to use them in their farms. And the Indians, the native Indians in America said no. You know what they used to do? When the white man turns his back, the Indian will kill him. He may die in the process, he doesn't care. 
he would kill him. That way they realize that enslaving Indians or turning them into farm animals is not possible. And they went to Africa. In Africa, when they came, <laughs> Africans only didn't serve them. Africans were willing to sell their relatives in order to please the white man. Because we have no shame and we have no pride. Why am I saying all of these things? Look at the case of Nigeria today. Somebody will come out and say that we are going to kill a particular set of people because they do not believe in what a white man created in Africa. In essence, that is what Lai Mohammed and the bandit Sheikh is saying. The reason why we would not negotiate with IPOB is because they do not recognize the legitimacy of Nigeria to exist. Without looking at the reason why. That is the thing about black people. They never look at the reason. Nobody has ever bothered to sit down and say, why is IPOB insisting that things cannot continue the way they are? Uh, of course, I'm very happy that some of them have now come around. They're beginning to reason like human beings. They are now beginning to reason like human beings. I don't know why a black man has no pride. If you have a pride in you as a black person, you cannot open your mouth and call you Gwacha Hakot. You cannot open your mouth and say Nigeria is my country. It shows you do not value yourself. You don't even trust yourself. You don't even trust your ancestors. You don't even trust God that made you the way you are. You have no shame inside you. That is why white people can come to Africa and draw our boundaries for us. Give us names they want us to bear. Even those of you who are in Christendom. When during baptism, you see how clever they are. During baptism, they tell you to throw away your old name. If you don't answer, I don't answer if you want. Don't answer Chibuzo. It's not good. Why don't you answer Raphael or answer Isabella? That has no meaning. I want to point out instances as to why people out of ignorance and foolishness defend one Nigeria. Anybody defending one Nigeria is an ignorant fool. He's a fool and is going to remain a fool forever. It means you are daft, you are hopeless, and you are very stupid. You have no brain. Had Nigeria been created by people coming together, as most people had campaigned for or agitated for many years ago, but lacked the balls to execute it. Had the likes of Shoinka and the Tinubu insisted that what we want is a sovereign Nabakoba, of course, sovereign national conference. So no matter what the Janjaweed is doing, no matter what Britain is doing, you say no, we want we want sovereign national conference and then after that a referendum. But today you have pride. People wonder why we are the way we are. We are the way we are because Biafra was the first African country, should I second African country to uh, uh, to, to to text freedom, genuine freedom, not flag independence, not neocolonialism, no, genuine freedom for three years. The children they gave birth to is carrying on from where their father stopped. Because you know why? We are their friends and in us there is a lot of pride. A lot of pride. I have told this story so many times that I'm sure even some people may be bored of hearing it, but I will say it once again. One of the things that formed my outlook on life was Alex Haley's book I read, Roots. I think I remember I was a 17 year old when I read Roots. I read Roots and um, a very brilliant book, I must say. There's an adaptation of it. Uh, I think it's a movie now as well. So some of you who are not taken to reading a very voluminous text, you can go and avail yourself of the, the, the cinematic interpretation of that very brilliant book. Roots. R-O-O-T. Roots. R-O-O-T-S. Alex Haley. In that very book, that was why when I 
any time uh, the, the, the two previous officers went to America, I had to go to, to Georgia, Atlanta, Georgia. From there, I drove, or somebody drove me, which I drove me for, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, what's his name again? I've forgotten his name. I don't know if it's old age that is coming. I, can't, I keep forgetting things these days. Um, I've forgotten his name, but it will come to me. He drove me for five hours. He's based there in, in Atlanta. We went to a place called Savannah. Because when I got into Georgia, you see, I said to them that I want to go and see that very place that an evil man said he would not be a slave to a white man. I went there and I prayed. And that very place is called Savannah. And the woman that has the house, that her garden is actually on the very spot at the bank of this very creek where they drowned themselves. She was enthralled. She said, yeah, people come around here to have a look. We were there to pray. You see, at that very spot was when white people realized who we are. That these people are a very, very proud race and very stubborn. You see, they brought them all the way from Monisha. In fact, basically in Obaro, they took them from Obaro and traveled all the way to U.S., men, women, and children. And when they inquired what they are there for, why they bound them in chains and brought them all the way to America, the white man said they are going to be sold as slaves, to work in the farm, to become uh, somebody else's property. And they said, instead of me to become a fellow human being's property, I would rather die. Do you know the reason why this part of black history is not given due prominence? It's because it will teach our children who we are, that we are a very proud race. And that is why people must understand, when they look at the Biafra IPOB agitation, they must understand where we are coming from. You may, if you are another race, you may be comfortable with being a slave. That is your business. But where we come from, in the land, the, the original land of the free, we are God Almighty in heaven is the king. Biafra was a kingdom. We are only God in heaven is the king. That all men are born equal before God and fellow men. We gave the world democracy. Biafra gave the world democracy before the great king. Don't take it from me, take it from the white people teaching it in the universities. In Argentina, that is what they teach. It's a fact. That is why they don't want Biafra to come. Because you are the light of the black race. That is why Janjaweed can't understand us because their reasoning is too low and is too poor. They know nothing. They know absolutely nothing. They don't know. When you see us agitate for Biafra, you kill us. You don't know what is driving us. Do you think we are doing this thing out of our own? What in, what we are doing is of the spirit. You can, unless you are in the spirit, you can't understand it. If you are a zoo animal, you cannot understand the Biafra. You can never do it. Never in your life. You are in a country where somebody created for you. Uh, 1960 Nigeria won independence in your life started in 1960 and every day you wake up as a grown up person lettered and educated you don't ask yourself what is the history of my grandfather you don't ask because you are black and every nonsense that comes to you you accept ask yourself why we go and protest you kill us, we go and protest. You kill us, we keep going. You kill us, we keep going. Have you ever wondered why? Do you think that what we are doing, that we even know what we are doing? No, we don't. What is driving us? What is driving our essence? Is something beyond the comprehension of a black person in Africa. You can't understand it. That is why Biafra is an enigma. Only the intelligent can. Only the intelligent who are in the spirit 
come. And because Biafra is down, that is why black people are suffering all over the world. I like a meeting and you do your envy all you like. Be jealous of unless Biafra is free, you can never be free. All of you together. So it is in the best interest of everybody to join hands together that we may liberate ourselves. Now let me ask you this very simple question. All their years of um, of um, restructuring debate, all their years of sovereign national conference, all their years of talking for constitutional change, has anything happened? No. Ask yourself, why is it now that everybody is talking about change, that something was deep? Had IPOB crawled back into its shell, we're at the height of the persecution. Do you think that we would have given people the courage to say what they're saying today? People are saying what they're saying because they know that the zoo was unable to suppress IPOB. Anybody talking anywhere in Nigeria is because of IPOB. Anybody anywhere standing up and shouting, it is because of IPOB. Do you know why? Because that's how God intended it. You see that race of people from the east, from Igodomigodo, all the way to Ambasonia. People of the east. You see that very little place that Islam could not come into. You see that very place? Do you know that it was done for a purpose? Do you know that the time Islam was making it to the west coast of Africa, every country in West Africa, Islam, Quran, dipped, or they dipped Quran in the Atlantic. Only the East. Have you, people, I don't know, have you ever sat down to ask yourself why there is Islam everywhere else, but not in the East? Because you don't know. You see, because Elohim never wanted it. God never wanted it. The reason why God allowed white man to bring his New Testament into our land is because he wanted to teach us a lesson. Oh, we are doing very horrible things. That's our temple in Arachibu. Very horrible things. And God was upset. There's something that happened to the temple in Jerusalem. Was what happened to us. But after 2,000 years, Israel discovered, rediscovered itself. And when Israel was about to be established, they said, no, don't go into armed struggle. Don't do this. Keep talking. Keep talking. Keep talking. And a very brave man, Menachem Begin, of Likud Party, the founder of Likud Party in Israel, Menachem Begin. I think at one time was also the head of Mossad. He was a prime minister, courageous and brave man, loved by God and men, only hated by the enemies of God. He said to hell with everybody. Do you know that it was Britain that was manning, the, they gave them what is called the Palestine mandate because by then they shut the whole world among themselves. They divide everything. All the colonial powers, they shared the world amongst themselves. Britain also got Israel. The same way Britain got the zoo with Gafans in it, their own was the Palestine, the, the holy land of Israel. And they asked Britain to leave, that the children of God, that God said the time has come for his children to return. Britain said no. Go and read your history books. Britain said no, they're not going anywhere. Do you know what Menachem Begin did? They used bomb and dynamite to blow the British away from the land of Israel. And at the end, Israel was restored. That is the reason why I love the Bible so much. When they say that the kingdom of God suffered violence, and only the violent can take it, and with force, if you restore the history of Israel, it's very clear. When Israel was begging, oh, you're killing, you know what that we used to do? You're killing us here. Nobody will listen. They were slaughtering Jews all over the world, slaughtering them for nearly 2,000 years. Nobody did anything. Until one day, <laughs> European Jews said, you know, they are going to kill us anyway. So we might as well put our life to a very good use while we still have it. We are going to have a state of Israel. And it happened. People said it wouldn't happen, but it happened. The same way we are going to have Biafra. It doesn't matter what you say. We have the lives to commit into it. And the end it will come. Because nobody can come from a place called Nigeria. 
only if you are an animal, only if you are a compound fool, only if you are a degenerate idiot, only if you don't have any brain. I keep asking you, okay, let us take your family now, for example. All of us, we have our own homes. Is that not correct? You have your wife, you have your children, and all the rest of it. And maybe some of you, as you're listening to this very broadcast this evening, you're with your family and you're eating and dining. Is that correct? Oh, how about if I walk into where you're eating now? It doesn't matter where it is. Let's say uh, I walk into uh, a family at Ijebo this evening and say I am a Biafran. And by the way, I want you to change your name. This night, the name of this village. No, in fact, Ijebo I want you to change it. And I want you to call it Ijebo Are you following? What will you do to me? Even Janja weed, if I were to go to to so, uh, so it doesn't belong to them, and I'm very happy to that uh, there's a vid, there's a clip I will play, not audio I will play uh, for you to hear, and I'm I'm sure our media will go and get it and spread it everywhere. When my Lafia was talking, Doctor My Lafia was talking on on channels that Janja weed TV station. He is the apart from we in IPOB, he is the only person I've heard use the word the Harvey Houses. Today, I knew that the man, he reads his books, he's intelligent. When I mentioned the Harbour monarchy, some of you don't know what it means. When I mentioned the Hausa, their name was the Harbour, H-A-B-E, the Harbour monarchies of the Hausa kingdoms. None of you knew what I was talking about, but today, my life here, I, I heard him say it. I ain't going to go on, to be honest, we are, we are learning. I'm being honest with you. But we shall get to that later. We must change where we reason black people and if you like it or not as i warned you as i well not warned as i uh, as i explained to you a few days ago as i explained to you people a few days ago if you ask angela merkel when they were exasperated with the presidency of Trump because they didn't understand him they will say these are european ministers oh, listen carefully to how white now i understand why white people they have so much they make so much progress a white person i heard angela merkel the leader of the of the strongest nation in europe germany by none germany is the strongest nation in europe do you know what she was saying well, we, we want President Trump to show leadership. He is the leader of the free world. This is a German prime minister saying that another head of state is the leader of the free world because they understand that if America is dies today or is suffering, they know they're all sunk. Can, do you think an African head of state will do that? <laughs> you, are, you have jazz. Never. Pride and envy won't let them. Jealousy and greed can't allow them. That is why they don't want to give their friends credit. They know who we are. They know, as I said to them, how many hours did your protest last at Lekki? Not up to five minutes. The vacuum swept all of you. It's that black Maria, and the protest is over. Because I did not bring out IPOB. I did not bring out their friends in Lagos. Had I given the order, come out for protest by today, the protest will, the protest will still be on. It is nobody's fault. That is how God made us. It is not, I am not bigoted. It is not about ethnic jingoism. It is not about a sense of racism. That is all rubbish. But the creation as we know it started in my land. Creation, God Almighty in heaven, chose Biafra land as the center of this very earth. Zero longitude and zero latitude. Go and check your geography textbooks. Zero latitude and zero longitude. Where sunlight meets darkness. The center of this very earth is in Biafra land. That is why Britain created uh, 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 Greenwich Mean Time. Moved it one hour to the left. Who doesn't know that? That is why they're afraid of us. That is why they cannot get any conviction in any court in the world. That is why they're even afraid of us, of trying us in their own courts. That is the reason why we are as formidable as we are. But the devil will try. The prince will try. As they did against the emergence of the glorious state of Israel. 
they will try, but they will fail in the end because we represent the light. Do you know that darkness has no power? You see darkness. You see, darkness has nothing to do with it. I want you to understand and, and relate this very analogy to the zoo called Nigeria. You see darkness, or the darkness. You know when Nepal takes light, there is darkness everywhere. That darkness has no power. Darkness is only acting because there is no light. Once light comes, it disappears. And it can never come. As long as that light is on, darkness will never come close. Never, ever, ever. It can never come close. Have you uh, done a simple experiment? Because you see, darkness, you know, when you're going out at night and there is no light, there is darkness everywhere, is because there is darkness in nature. If nothing is fueling it, there is no uh, uh, generator generating darkness. No, it's there, just there. Like Lucifer. Once, you see, for you to defeat darkness, you need to generate electricity or light. And to generate light takes energy. You must do something. You can't be quiet. You must do something. If you don't do something, you go to live in darkness. So that time you put your the, the, the battery inside your torch and you on the torch. What happens? Darkness along that line flees. It can never come as long as your light is on. As long as your light bulb is on, there is no way darkness can come. But darkness, it doesn't cause darkness anything. Like the full of it doesn't cause them anything to destroy. But to overpower them, you must come together. There must be synergy. There must be energy. There must be momentum. You have, must have that thrust. By thrust, I mean TH, R U S T, not T R U S T. Now you understand me, don't you? Now you understand me, don't you? I insult black people because I want them to develop some sense. If uh, begging them doesn't work, this is black. This but how can you explain to somebody who is a PhD holder, who is a professor, a professor who will open his mouth and call his land Port Harcourt? You are a professor of maybe nuclear science. That means you have no shame and you have no pride. We 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 all mask our collective impotence. You know, we are very blacks are very important. Especially when you go on to Facebook and see the you know, the wish when we are arguing about separation and freedom, many years ago some idiots are talking rubbish. Nigeria, one Nigeria, patriotic Nigeria, who can be idiot? Patriotic who? You mean patriotic product of Frederick Lugard. Nobody is a Nigerian. You deal with you morons. No human being is a Nigerian. That is how daft you people are. The sooner you search for salvation under your ethnic identity or nationality, the better for you. Shameless people. Who is a Nigerian? Let me ask you. Who? Is that the one from, from Mali with AK-47 somewhere in, in Mina? Raping and killing people? People without a, 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 a collection of people without honor or shame. God have mercy on your ignorance and the wretchedness of it. We love to mask our collective impotence by seeking solace in English language. That's most of us don't even know. You see one idiot writing uh, writing grammar. Ask him to explain that grammar he doesn't know. He doesn't know what he's writing. Now, because the word sounds sweet, just like when we learned uh, uh, the, the phrase uh, circumstances beyond my control. Uh, anything you ask somebody who says circumstances beyond my control, he doesn't know that it sounds nice in the air. On a total anti. So you say circumstances beyond, even out of context, they use it. That is what happens to all these idiotic intellectual grammarians on Facebook, right? Go, go, go. Go, go, go. Now, listen. Imagine how powerless we have been for years to make minor, what I would even call insignificant change, like ordinary restructuring. Ask yourself this question: What would it cost for a little restructuring? Nothing. No, it doesn't. Nothing. Those championing restructuring, they don't say let's break Nigeria. No, they say let's make things better. Somebody somewhere said no. <laughs> Go through your senators. Because they know they have the numerical strength to frustrate whatever motion or bill that you have on the floor of both the House of Reps and of the Senate. 
and somebody who is so blatantly disadvantaged will rise up in the morning and tell you he's a proud Nigerian. I want to, I want to, I want to, to demolish these, these, these in intellectual lilliputs. Let me put it that way. They are minions. They are nothing. They hide under grammar. They spend four days. They go to the dictionary, cramming every rubbish. They come and they write junk because they are inferior. Because you see, an English man speaks English. And uh, you know, they, they are so inferior that you, you have to write, you, you want to aspire to write like an English man, so you can perhaps acquire some of the aura of an English person so that your peers can respect you. But you are making an absolute joke full of yourself. As most of you men know, I have been to many countries around the world. And there are people who write and speak their language with every pride, every pride. <laughs> You come and you speak and say, oh, oh, you speak English and you, you say, yeah, okay. Why don't you learn my language? <laughs> oh, dear. Simple change. As something as minor as, let us go back to the regions that was working. Fulani well, said, no. Only one group. And they're a minority. A bunch of Janjak, a minority. They are not up to 20 million. They're not up to 20 million. Um, it's so ridiculous. I thank God that the houses have woken up after many years. Of, sometimes you, if you're IPAB, you pat yourself on the back. You have changed so much. I'm telling you that you have changed the thinking and the reasoning capacity of most people in that damnable zoological republic. And we must continue. We're going to stop. Imagine how over... Are you hearing of sovereign national conference anymore? That one is dead, though. Simple, minor even insignificant change like restructuring the political landscape, they said no. Because you're a black man, you don't have the power to do anything. This UG. Something that should help move a country forward, some idiots in the same country, on the contrary, some of the so-called agitators for restructuring, you know what they're waiting for? They're waiting for Britain to say something. Not to say, but to do something. They want Britain to pick up the phone, the Prime Minister of Britain, US President, then call whoever is in Asura and say, now it's time for restructuring. And do you know where they got that nonsense from? It was during Abacha's time. None of you were able to remove Abacha. He was a very deadly dictator, a very brutal one for that matter. Abacha was killing left, right, and center. Yet in Canada, there is Sally Abacha Stadium. Uh, somebody who is acknowledged to be a mass murderer. The same thing they did with the regime, the murderous regime of Abacha, is what they are doing with Fulani headsmen, Mietiala, killers and murderers. They always defend their own. And somebody was, I, I remember in those days, uh, uh, they said uh, their zoo national team, uh, uh, Green Eagles, were going to play Zoo Super Eagle. I don't know what Eagle they are now. Or maybe Dark Eagle or White Eagle, I don't know. That they were going to play football match in Canada at a place called Sunny Abacha Stadium. And I think I remember the white commentator saying, <laughs> Come on, Sunny Abacha Stadium? Was that not the dictator? <laughs> hey, show me left everybody and was doing me. He had a half on your blood. Them. Left everybody and was holding me. Now you understand it, don't you? The same way they are defending is it not Buhari, the dead one, or the real Buhari? When that dead Buhari was it, do you remember when Buhari said that Abacha did not loot any money? Have you all forgotten? One Nigerians. You see the way you reason? That is why I feel sorry for all of you. You're one Nigerianist. Your stupidity cannot be weighed on a scale. Your idiocy is legendary. I'm telling you. Sunny Abacha Stadium. And they said uh, Abacha did not steal anything. Hiding on that English. It's common destruction you cannot do. Ordinary. Everybody agrees it may help. You cannot effect, you cannot do it. Because you're waiting for a white EU, white America, white Canada, white everywhere to do it for you. Because it was America that killed Abacha, not you. 
You are impotent and you are powerless. And it wasn't Africans that got independence for Africa. It was the United States of America warning Britain and the whole of Europe to get away from Africa. That was what happened right after the Second World War. Anybody telling you that they fought and they got uh, uh, their, their, their flag independence is a liar and is a deceiver. Do you understand? I think it was Harry Truman that said to Europe, oh, enough of that rubbish, that useless colony you have in Africa. Get out! And they went out. The same thing happened during the Suez Canal crisis. Some of you may not know because you may be too young or you are historical because you don't read books. There was a very brave, young military officer in Egypt called Gamel Abdel Nasser. And he killed, what's his name again? He killed the very moderate Egyptian Prime Minister, or, or they said he was killed by the, um, um, what's it called, Islamic Brotherhood. He assumed power. Britain left Britain. No? <laughs> they want to come to Africa to be called into toll gate, checkpoints. They set up checkpoints for as well. Because it's far more easier, like the Panama Canal, far more easier for ships to use the Mediterranean Sea to cross through the Suez Canal into the Arabian Gulf. Is that, is that, is that Gulf of Eden? Or is it Arabian Gulf, one of the two? The Arabian Gulf. Well, they call it Gulf of Eden. Because that way the ships, rather than going through South Africa, the Cape of Good Hope, and coming back up again via the Indian Ocean, a very long journey, you cut that journey short by taking a shortcut. The Britain built a, a toll gate. <laughs> In Africa, <laughs> when NASA came in, NASA said, you cannot come here and be collecting money, tax on my father's land. You have to go. Britain said no. NASA took it over by force. I think it was Prime Minister Eden in England, in Britain, that sent British expeditionary force to go and retake Suez Canal that doesn't belong to Britain by force. The Suez Canal Company. They went into Suez Canal after two or three days. Uh, he didn't got a phone call from the U.S. president in no uncertain terms, told him to get away from there. It's not yours. That was how Britain withdrew. Because Britain listened to USA. Because USA take care of British interests as well. Now, do you understand how they play this politics? Do you understand it? In your own land, you, you cannot even bring up a simple change. Ordinary, ordinary restructuring, not even freedom. Ordinary restructuring you cannot do. Always blowing useless, senseless grammar that has no meaning. After blowing grammar, there's no light. No hot to no good roads. After blowing grammar and putting on tie in the in the middle of the afternoon. Also funny sweet. And I not so evil, speaking grammar all the time. And nothing is happening. Intellectuals everywhere. We must come up with the impotence by seeking solace in, in English language we don't even understand, most of us. We are always waiting for white people. We are not going to wait anymore. We are better off dead now. What are we doing with life? This stupid, useless life. A life where somebody can come from, from Mali with AK 47 and go to Zombe and decide to rape a grandmother. After raping the grandmother, you say they are misunderstood. They are misunderstood. You misunderstood them. They are my brothers. Uh, according to Sheikh Gul, is that the type of country you want me to be in? Are, are you mad? Are you, are, you, are, you sure are you sure you are you sure you are well? Are you sure you are well? Are you sure you are well? Oh, the lecturers everywhere. Go go go. But now they have come back to the. Most of them have come back to the senses. We, we need to get off our lazy asses to make lives better for ourselves by seeking freedom for everybody. I said mass over, over those of freedom. Freedom is like vitamin C. In actual fact, it has no overdose. More freedom is better for everybody. And that is the freedom that we are seeking for. For everybody, for every dick, every thumb, every, everybody must be free. Everybody must be free. Uh, they cage you in the zoo, treating you like animal. The same way they treated your fathers, they're treating you, and you take, you take it. All you do is you complain, you bother, and you go back and you sleep. Not in IPOB, we don't do that rubbish. 
Look at how successive governments in Nigeria adopted what I call the pauperization. I want to get this to program. You know when they turn somebody into a pop, into a very poor, wretched soul. I call it the, the pauperization philosophy of the Flavi Janjaweed. You know what they did in their feudal system? They, they, they become wealthy by impoverishing everybody else. You have to be poor. Only their children will go to school. Only them will have houses in Dubai. The ordinary house man on the street is doing Babiyan with no hope for his children. But they, even, even Fulanis are suffering, you know, it's only the feudal laws. They have educated semi literate feudal laws of the Fulani. They brought in that mentality. Some of you don't know why you don't have light in Nigeria. I, some, I, sometimes I look at it and I laugh. A country that has coal, abundance of it, you have world to world sunshine every blessed day. You have tidal waves along the coastal lines. You have dams, you build dams, yes? You have gas. Let me repeat you can generate electricity through thermal, which is coal, through gas, through wind, through waves, you know, sea waves. Okay, yeah. And if your child were to grow up and to start driving, you, you will need to get to the 10th generation in the next maybe 500 years or 500 something years for you to be able to build a house. That time you're long gone. And those after you are long gone too. And now what I want to say to you is that what they're doing in the zoo is deliberate. And what IPOB is doing, what we in the Biafran movement is doing is to set all of you free. You may not like the approach, you may not like the style, but it is the truth that we are preaching here, and we will continue to preach it. That is why you have high levels of illiteracy, that all of them from Atiku to the dead Buhari, to all of them that children's school are brought to Saraki, all of them that children went abroad to study. <laughs> but they neglected their mates, their age mates gave birth to bandits that you have today. The murderers and the killers and the terrorists and the rapists you have. <laughs> Do you see how it's called the irony of life? And that is why we must be free. They say illiteracy, ignorance, and chronic poverty as a tool with which to control the population and manipulate them. That is why Roger Sogrocha was able to rent his own thugs and hope us are his own thugs. These are hungry people, hungry youths. They have to feed and eat. They, why do they have hungry? And the cults and all this rubbish. People are idle, they're not doing anything. And as they say, an idle man is a, an idle mind is a devil's workshop. <laughs> Isn't it? You know, we are one of the people that when I read a book, I take something from the book. And I practicalize it. But some of you read just for the for, for reading's sake, if at all you do. Thank goodness that today northern so-called minorities, the minorities, the minorities, northern minorities are waking up. House people, the happy houses are waking up as well. They own the land of the north. Northern Nigeria today is a land of happy house people. Not Fulani. Not Fulani never can never ever be. And house people must rise up to take their land back. It may seem impossible. But believe you me, by the time we are rising up everywhere, these murderers and killers and rapists from the vulture-infested foothills of the Jalon will head back from whence they came. You must understand this. How is it that 200 million people cannot effect a change against an oppressive gang of people? Uh, 2,000 lunatics. Call themselves politicians. I don't have to do No, they're not. And they're back up. Let, let's give them credit. Let's round it up to 20,000 people. 20,000 people oppressing 200 million people. It reminds me of how white people came into Africa with only 20 men and conquered all of us. Look at where we are today. And we allow these 20,000 people every blessed day to be ruining our lives. The, the, why, is, why do you think that politicians own newspapers in the zoo? Name one independent publisher you have in Nigeria. They are all financed by politicians because they want to keep you locked down in your ignorance and your 
perpetual cycle of poverty and deprivation. It's time for these 200 million people to rise against the wicked 20,000. Wicked and evil. These are people at home. They are evil people. Evil. Lunatics. And the funny thing is that with the help of Britain, they dominate the political space. Ask yourself this question repeatedly until it sinks in into your black skull. Ask why is it that 200 people, 200 million people are so docile? So docile and imbecilic that 20,000 tell them, uh, telling you, uh, went to the structure, went not to the structure. Who told you that? A republic means a nation run according to the will or dictates of the public, of the people. That is the, some of you don't even know of republic. Anyway, you have His Royal Highness in the Republic. <laughs> Oh God, what a contradiction. What a con I am happy that today our own intellectuals are now beginning to see the right, the, the light, of course. Before they were in darkness, they are now in the light. As we, have, as we have always said to you, we in IPOB, we are the children of light. We represent light in here. Light. Now people are coming from darkness into the light. And why am I saying this? The rate at which a, a full of fools are repenting these days, so I see them, some of them on social media, some of them are asking me for forgiveness. I'm just happy. You know what they say, when one person repents, there is joy in heaven. All I have inside me is joy that people have now seen that thing that we saw many years ago. The rate which they are repenting these days, some of them, are, are, people send me their write-ups and I, I'm saying no. They say no, it's him. That intellectual, he has now uh, converted. He, ha he now has reason. Or should I say reasoning capacity? The rate at which they are embracing the ideology of IPOB, <laughs> you would think that rapture is about to happen. Or that maybe that Jesus Christ has landed somewhere and uh, making his way to, to the zoo called Nigeria. And uh, following behind him is uh, Prophet Muhammad at the rate at which people are these days converting. We have succeeded in resetting the minds and the brain of your average Nigerian. Everybody, go to the TV and write up, everybody now speaks like IPOB. Everybody, everything they're saying is now what IPOB used to say. This very indigenous people of Biafra, this noble family, that never capitulated. They stayed strong, immense. Despite the slaughter, slaughter after slaughter, they remained. That is why for me, I'm, uh, uh, it may sound a bit incestuous, but for me, the only people that I have regard and respect for is IPOB, to be honest with you. The only people I have regard for is IPOB, nobody else. When other people were falling by the wayside, IPOB held on tenaciously and doggedly to this very ideology. The separation is the best solution. People are now beginning to reason properly. And above all, they have now acquired the courage to speak out, and I welcome it. Somebody wrote a very compelling, a former intellectual, he wrote a very compelling article. I couldn't have it in myself. I couldn't have a very good argument. And I want to use it to drive home. Hey, two hours are there enough now, but actually, I'm actually, 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 I want to preach the gospel of heaven. Because I want to warn you, you see it happening. Gospel of heaven, that's what I preach. You, as of course, most of a very handful of you, as uh, black people, you will always find uh, reason to be black in terms of your stupidity. But here, I don't have time for such. This very former intellectual route, United Kingdom, listen carefully, please, you Nigerian. I want to make an average Nigerian appear as stupid as he or she is. I want to use this article written by a former AFLF, an intellectual, before castigating IPOB. He has repented, and I want to read for you what he wrote. 
to tell you that as I always said, in the end, we always win. It doesn't matter what you do. We are we will wear you out in the end. If you see hope what will happen to him. In the end, we win. Always we win. Now listen. United Kingdom, the people that created you, you Nigerians, your creator, God did not create you. Stop every Nigerian should stop saying God is my creator. God did not create you. I can tell you who created you. And at precise at the precise moment when she created you, I will say she in this case, for a show. God did not create any Nigerian. The man that created you and the woman, they are both dead. That is why the zoo will die. United Kingdom was formed by the people of United Kingdom, not a foreigner. This intellectual rights. But the same United Kingdom will not allow we black Africans to freely determine our own political future. Are you listening very carefully? Britain was formed by Scotland and England coming together in a meeting, in a, in a, in a sovereign national conference. Let's use that term. In a confab, they came together in a confab. And Scotland and England decided, we are now going to be one under these terms. Some of you don't understand the United Kingdom because you, you call it London, so I forgive your ignorance. The United States, Scotland, United Kingdom, which is part of the UK, that they have a different, they have an entirely different judicial system. The Scottish court is called the Scottish Court of Sessions. In the U, in the England, it's called the High Court, or the Appeal Court. In Scotland, they have sheriff till tomorrow morning. In England, you have chief constable. Different policing, different legislature. Scotland, they have their own flag. England have their own flag. Wales, they have their own flag. Northern Ireland, they have their own flag. Everybody's on their own. Even the education system is not the same thing. In Scotland, people still go to university for free. In England, you go with a loan. All these things are there. <laughs> but do you know what I find astonishing? The same United Kingdom will not allow you to have the same thing that they have. Now ask yourself this question. Why is it that they don't want you to have what they have? <laughs> now you understand it. Now you understand it. Black people. Black people, when will you receive sense? In this UG, black. When will you receive? Britain is against restructuring. Britain presided over, should I say, superintended the slaughter of five million people because they don't want you to have what they have. Ojuku went to Aburi to go and negotiate confederation. Regionalism is something you have in England. The British High Commissioner then in Lagos told the Fulani people to say no. The records are there. Ojuku never went to Aburi to go and succeed. Ojuku went to Aburi to go and get you, what you're fighting for now was what Ojuku was fighting for in 1967, but none of you knew. They used their propaganda, BBC, to deceive all of you. If you meet an average, illiterate, useless Nigerian, he will tell you, but you went to war, but you went to war, but you went to secession, secession, seceded. That is why I said that, um, anyway, by force, by force, they will receive sense, intellectuals everywhere, Omo black people, they eat their own flesh. You eat your own flesh. But when you see a white man, you jump up and start, you, you stand and you salute him immediately. That is why a vagrant, a street, a, a, a homeless white man can come to Africa and become a manager in a top company. You have no regard for who you are. But we are IPOB. And we have regard for who we are. Britain, they have a structure, you know. Scotland is on their own. Britain, why can't I have what you have? They say no, because we're a nigger. We created you. How can a, they are playing God? We created Nigeria. Every Nigerian is a British product. Some of you are like um, a factory product to them. You are like a factory product. And the worst factory product you can ever have is the one that doesn't know that he or she is a factory product. 
I'm very sad indeed. Britain, give us what you have. Common restructuring Britain will not allow us to have. This is what is called total control. They own you. Fulani are doing what they because Britain is behind them. Fulani can kill all of you. No. Yeah. Britain will say, it's farmer head of class. Farmer head of class. Farmer head of class. They are raping your mother. Fulani, Janja Wu is on top of your mother with AK-47, raping her in front of you. You are calling the British High Commissioner. Come on, it's farmer head of class. You are farmer head of class on top of a woman. Is that, is that farmer head of class? Is that farmer head of class? I ask of you. Black Africans, even the United Kingdom, have a better political prospect than those in Africa. This is the reality that we black people have failed to confront. A black person in England, in the UK, has a better political future than a black person in his father's compound in Africa somewhere. The worst thing to ever happen to Nigeria is the primitive feudal mindset of the Fulani Janjaweed aided and abetted by British neocolonialists. I do not honestly think that any African country, honestly speaking, qualifies to be a member of the UN. What we have in Africa are artificially created political enclaves under the domination of their colonial masters. It is called neocolonialism. The brain of a black person is designed to engineer hardship. Why do you think they shut down all the factories? Why do you think there is no electricity? Because they want to make you poor. English, Scottish, Welsh, they came together in 1707 to form a union. They decided to call their new formed union, Union Kingdom. The union was between the Kingdom of England and the Kingdom of Scotland. The Kingdom of Ireland joined them in 1801. The Union became the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland. Even their respect Ireland stands in even oh, United based on common goals and interests. And they had a treaty. Where is the treaty of Nigeria that bound Nigeria to? Where is the treaty that says that a Yoruba man must be in a country with Fulani man? Where is the treaty that says a white man must be in the same country with a Nubian man? Where is the treaty? Where is it not? A white man is your treaty. Very, very sad indeed. Very, very sad indeed. England, they have their own flag. Everybody, they, anywhere, and they have a Union Jack. Go and look at the Union Jack, the United Kingdom flag, the British flag. You will see that every nation is there in that flag. They don't want us to have the same thing. Do you know that even their passports are different, their currencies are... Do you know that in Scotland, the pound in Scotland is issued by the Royal Bank of Scotland? or by Bank of Scotland. It is different from the one issued by the Bank of England. Are you people aware? But I keep asking myself, why is it that Britain, you have all these things, you don't, oh, okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, We're, you created us. I'm sorry, we don't have any say. Uh, sorry, sir, sorry. So, sorry, Colonial Master. I spoke out of turn. What has one Nigeria done for you? One Nigeria only succeeded in giving you poverty, in giving you nepotism, bloodshed, discrimination, tribalism, just name it. At no time in the history of the Zoological Republic of Nigeria did these zoo animals called Nigerians ever sit down to discuss why they need to be together. All they do is to preach peace and unity without the ingredients of peace and unity. You come to my land and you kill me, and you're asking me to be peaceful. How is that possible? And now, and now, please, there is something that I, I want us to, to listen to very carefully. I want us to listen to this very, very carefully, please, because um, I, I want to play this if it will let me. If at all it would let me, I would like to play it. I would like to play it, because it is very, very important that I play this this very evening, I need to play it. Our people need to understand what is happening, what is going on. I want to play it. I do. Seriously, I want to play it. And as soon as I get it, it was an interview by on, on, on channel television. And I want you to listen to the 
to the final detail of that very conversation. It is very, very important. The final, de the final details of that conversation is key for people to understand what I'm talking about. Talking now, listen, I'm, I want it is from is from channels television. I want you to listen to this very interview very, very carefully, please. Very, very carefully. Please listen. Recent times, we've also seen even Fulani uh, ethnic groupings suffer some of this violence. In Sokuta State, for instance, the people who were attacked to Fulani in Samfara State. This girl is defending at Channels TV, she is defending Fulani Janja Buddhism. Because they give her money, maybe they are, one of them have taken her to Dubai to do shopping. And she has bought, I think she bought a new blouse. I have I've not seen her before because her wardrobe is very poor. She bought a new blouse now and changed her glasses. So whoever took her to Dubai, she needs to defend the person's interest. That's what she's doing. Let us listen to what the, the girl has to say. This is the man anchor uh, on, on uh, my, whatever her name is, uh, on Channels TV. Uh, one of those doing the bidding of Lani Janjaweed. Listen. For instance, very people wrong. who yeah, were also wrong. attacked. Just a moment. The people who were attacked were also Fulanese in Kebi State, where you know where we also understand that there is a vibrant farmer po farmer Fulani population. They have also suffered some violence from this so-called herdsmen. So, so can we really say it's about an ethnic group, or is it you know something that we, we're yet to really put a finger on? To be honest with uh, with you, Let's I agree. use the word Fulani as a generic term, that we have armed militias, many of them from foreign lands. You know, we, when you speak Hausa, and I speak Hausa like a native, I speak it better than my, my maternal language. This is my love, yeah. Okay? And when somebody opens their mouth, you know precisely what kind of Hausa they have. Whether it is Hausa and Kano, Hausa and Zari, Hausa and Zazo, Hausa and, Hausa and Kasana, Hausa and Sopacho. And when you know Hausa and Niger, Hausa and Mali, you know it. Many of these people are foreigners. We, we call them foreigners because that is what they call themselves. And, uh, but I think it is, this is more than just foreigners. But I think you are, if I may respectfully disagree with you, the killings in, in Zamfara, uh, ethnic, it is actually foreigners killing normal Habbe Hausa people, indigenous Hausa people. Did you hear that? Fulani are killing indigenous Habbe Hausa people. This is from Dr. Maya Lafia. He speaks Hausa more than most two Hausa people. Are you listening? Do you want the same thing to happen to you? Hausa gave them everything. Gave them Gobert. Gave them all their cities. Killed their kings for them. Fulani is not happy. Even after nearly 200 years, Fulani is still killing. They are killing Hausa today. They have the houses. They give, the, the funny thing is that they convince these houses to help them to kill their kings. And these jobs agreed. Today they're killing them. In other words, who puts them? And those of you working for the Janja week, it doesn't matter what you do. In the end, they will kill you. Let us listen to this very erudite, intelligent, composed, polished, and intelligent man speaking. You know, I, I am drawn to intelligence. When I see people who are genuinely intelligent, I'm drawn to them. Let's go, go, go. Listen to the points the man is making. Hausa is in trouble. Hausa, Hausa Fulani, Hausa Fulani. They are saying, let's unite. Hausa Fulani, they are killing Hausa. Fulani is killing Hausa. And they say, let's unite. It's something they want to do to you. Listen, please. Let us learn from those that know. Call them Fulani is because that is what they call themselves. And, uh, but I think it is, this is more than just Fulani. But I think you are, if I may respectfully disagree with you, the killings in, in Zamfara, uh, ethnic, it is actually Fulani is killing normal Habbe Hausa people, mm -hmm. indigenous Hausa people. And in Benengwari, majority of them are Muslims, but they are, they are Bagi people. Benengwari, the city of the Bagi. In Sokoto? In Sokoto, it is mostly the farmers that are being attacked. In Kebi. In Kebi, the same thing. The, the farmers thing. who are sometimes, and most times, Fulani as well. Uh, have you ever come across a Fulani farmer? I think you're making this up, Mope. There's no such thing as a Fulani farmer. There's no such thing in, in the in the geomorphology of rural rural there society. There are Fulani people who, who are settled. There are Fulani people who own land in, in this country, aren't but there? There are extremely few, and we don't really... You can call them Fulanis, but 
Fula and Ingida who have lost their uh, their language and so on and so forth, we hardly even refer to them as Fulani. He even knows the, the nomenclature. Fulani, 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 Fulani Ingiwa, or whatever, I don't know. This man is very bright. Listen to him, please. We hardly ever refer to them as Fulani. The real Fulanis we talk about are uh, the pastoralists. There are settled Fulanis, of course, but many of them are, 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 are clerics, Islamic clerics, they are teachers, they are scholars, and they are the aristocracy, by the way. They are, they are the aristocracy. So those of them who are farmers are an extremely small population. Extremely small population. But they exist Trust me, I have been... They exist nonetheless. They do exist. This is from research done by other journalists. I mean, I haven't they had do. the privilege of no. doing the research myself. Yes. But I have read from other journalists who have. They yeah. have been to those places and they can identify full any population who are farmers and have also faced crisis of having to deal with this so-called herdsmen. But we are talking in in basic general terms. How many, what's the percentage of those people that are actually farmers? I don't dispute. Just like in fact, there are, there are Biron people, there are chief people who actually earn cattle. And, and uh, I wouldn't for that purpose therefore say that uh, uh, middle bell peoples are also pastoralists and so on and so forth. I mean, uh, we, we should, uh, you know, it's called demolishing a half-baked journalist. Demolish, demolition. Complete demolition. The fact that, um, uh, 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 what's it called? I know Omahi has about 3,000 heads of cattle. Does it mean that um, Igbo people of Igbo, the pastoralists, she's trying to justify the killing of of, of, um, of human beings by saying that the Fulani should be excused. They are also, you know, that's a stupid argument. We are also suffering. Rubbish. Absolute rubbish. Listen. Very precise, I think, in the social categorization of these people. Yes, indeed, there's, there's nothing wrong. There would be there would be some small percentage of Fulanis who own farms, mm -hmm. and then there wouldn't be anything wrong with that. And that is not the issue. The issue is the scale and the genocidal level of ethnic cleansing that is going on in the Middle Belt. So this has come up again because yes. of this in the Middle Belt. Belt. Yes. You said genocidal killings going on in the Middle Belt. The same Middle Belt and the Fulani is convinced to join hands with them to fight Biafra. That is why, why when I pray, I say, I can sing about Let that hand they used to feed others poison. May they feed from it as well. And may they too be poisoned. The same Middle Belt, they convinced, Igbo man is your problem. Biafra is your problem. That is what Fulani does. Every time you two of you will be fighting, they'll be busy advancing their 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 their, their, their agenda. Are you hearing it now? The, the Hausa gave them land that accommodated them. Today, Hausa people are being killed. The, during the war, they said to Middle Belt, Igbo man is your problem. Whenever you see them, kill them. They, they helped these people from the Middle Belt. They helped to kill Igbo people. Today, they themselves are being killed. So what goes around, as they say. Listen. But it was saying, Absolutely. <laughs> which some people say we tend to come up every electoral cycle. The moment we're getting closer to an elections, we hear calls for restructuring and we begin to get much louder. We also seem to see some violence on the increase. Do you think they are connected? Uh, no, they are not connected. You see, Maope, uh, I, the, the call for restructuring has been going on for a long time. And I can tell you, in all sincerity, that I myself was quite skeptical about it at the very beginning. He was a skeptic. Uh, some of us are real Nigerian patriots. We love Fulanis. We love Muslims. They are our people. We have no issue with that. We're, the issue we have is with this ethnic cleansing that is going on. All men and women of conscience must reject it. We must draw a red line beyond which we will not longer accept it. And this nonsense has got to stop now. We reject it in total. And and uh, the call for restructuring is just right because if this thing is going on with such a warped federal structure that we have, then it is better to have a proper federal system so that all the ethnic so-called minorities and the middle belt are not minorities because we've done some statistics they have to 40 million people 
They are one of the largest groups in this country as, as a group. Let these people have the right to choose through a referendum which region they want to belong to. Did you hear that? Why I said, if you are in IPOB, you must pat yourself on the back. You are formidable. He used the word referendum. So the middle belt, what they're angling for now is a referendum to determine if they want to be with the Fulani controlled Janjaweed core north, by which I mean the Sharia north or not. Who brought referendum into the debate? Political debate and discourse in the zoo. It is IPOB. Are you listening to it? There is a point I want to make reference to, and you must be very patient and listen to it. You must be present and listen to what is happening because this Fulani uh, uh, um, journalist or Fulani is a journalist, you opened her mouth to say what I've always wanted them to say. Basically, she hung herself. Listen carefully. So people that want to come together that believe in the secular order of the state, that believe in humanity, that believe in social justice, can come together. Those who want to introduce the Wahhabi ideology from Saudi Arabia are free to do so, chopping people's heads and chopping their arms. That should be their goddamn business. But people who want to live in a civilized community should be free to come together in their own region under their own government it's and very their own interesting laws. you use the word civilized and some people yes. will say they, they, they take exception to that because the for them sharia is civilization and and they don't see anything wrong with it and some countries have practiced this successfully now, I, i've told of wahhabi ideologies from saudi arabia that is barbaric and totally uh with due respect it, it, it is they're allowed to you know choose whatever it's very barbaric. They have no rights with women. But, and, but, uh, but you, don't cannot, you, you cannot condemn what they have chosen. It is You cannot condemn what they have chosen. Are you listening? This woman is saying you cannot condemn what they have chosen. Why don't you allow us as well to choose if we want to live that way or not? She's from Channel's Television. That's how they hang themselves. And she's an intellectual. <laughs> do you see the way they behave? Do you see the way they are? They know that referendum is the way to go. If the Fulani can choose to behave, to live with Wahhabi tendencies, that is their business. Also, allow me to live in the land of Biafra the way I want to live. And they're saying no. That is why you have Fulani in your bushes. That's why you have the ginger wood in your forest. They're raping your mothers, abducting your sisters, killing your, your, your grandparents. And there's nothing you can do about it because you are in one damnable zoological republic. The more you call yourself a Nigerian, the more you're setting up yourself for destruction. If in doubt, go and ask the Habe houses. They are being killed today. If you're in doubt, go and ask those in the middle of the white people that are being killed today. Why? Because they allowed them to come in. So <laughs> all of you like hopeless are them man. Hopeless are them man. <laughs> okay, we shall see. We shall see. That is why Sheikh Gumi can come out to brazenly and shamelessly justify the killing and raping of women and children by his own people, the bandit Sheikh. Have you seen the video of um, those, I call them fools in the army, Christian fools in the army praying in Sambisa Forest? The same Sheikh Gumi that he, they are fighting for. They are in Sambisa, they are Christians from the south and middle belt fighting a war to keep Sheikh Gumi safe with his family. The same Sheikh Gumi turned around and said that and told bandits who are killing people and kidnapping school children, Oh, don't worry, those killing you are Christians in the army. Nigerian, one Nigeria. Nobody has arrested him. The man you heard his voice a few minutes ago, my love here. They invited him to come to DSS for questioning. Sheikh Gumi opened, he's a Nigerian, no. For, he is a revered, the learned Sheikh. People are so daft because uh, you know, Bandit Super said you should call him he, his revered. That's why you're calling he revered Sheikh. He said that those killing them are Christians and soldiers from the south. Sheikh, a Sheikh in the zoo, negotiating for money to uh, so when they give money to these bandits, he will share with them. And he's a one Nigerian, he's an intellectual. So to speak, I, 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 because I call him a Leonard Sheikh, a black man doing Sheikh in Africa. 
not in Saudi Arabia, not in the UAE, not in the Arabian Peninsula. He's doing shake in in uh, in this thing, in uh, in Uguza or in Katangora. Mad people everywhere. Ndiara, Jupiter, Benin. Sheikh Abu Bakr Mahmoud Uguni is angry that Nigerian soldiers of Christian, should I say, of um, Christian lineage, so to speak, or leaning, are uh, killing bandits. Or Bo no, killing Boko Haram, not bandits. Nobody can talk bandits. He's not happy about it. Same as the late dead Buhari. And you are in one country with them. These are your fellow Nigerians. All of you Nigerian animals, these are your fellow Nigerians, yeah? <laughs> fellow, my fellow Nigerians, you have seen them. Bandits should be pampered. Oh my goodness. My goodness. They 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 messed you people up, didn't they? The North got together with Britain, they constructed a document that handed power in perpetuity to the Fulani. And that's it. All the houses get from it is our the, by an appendage to attach their name to Fulani. Also, the only thing they gain is answering in the past to Hausa Fulani. They are suffering today. They are killing them too. And we have reason up to say enough is enough. And they are saying no to it. And that is why they have failed and will continue to fail. Even today, you know, Baki people in Abuja, that was that own Abuja, when we said to them that the army is helping the the terrorists to take over people's land, some of you did not listen. Don't push us to violence for those who are complaining. Every if you are not violent, I'm saying in the world so the world can hear me. If you are not violent, full army terrorists will use violence to rape your mother, cut up your father, abduct your sisters, and take over your land. If you call self-defense violence, that is your business. That is your very limited and idiotic understanding of what is all about. They have come. This is not Biafran, so these are baggy people from Abuja. You call Gwari. Don't push us to violence. Federal capital territory communities warn Nigerian army over land. Nigerian army will come, use their uniform, use the, the equipment they got from Britain, from USA, from Germany. Meant to fight Boko Haram to be grabbing land for terrorists. Nigerian army. That's what they want to do in Olu. Because we drove foreigners away from Olu. They came in to, to reinstate them in our land. And of course we said no. You, I don't know what, how else you want these things explained to you. I don't know how else you want to understand this. What we are saying is as clear as daylight. As clear as daylight, you can see it very clearly. But some of you have chosen to ignore, not some of you, I think everybody now realize that there is no way ahead unless the IPOB way, referendum and disintegration. Then people can decide where they wish to belong. That taking land from, from Gwadi people, their claim is the north, north. You know all that myth about north, have we not shattered it? Shatter is gone. But that north is gone, rubbish. Now everybody to your tent, oh Israel, needs now full honey. No more north. Yeah, you telling me that the north is one that Gwadi people are complaining that army is they are using army van, army uniform to take land from people to give to terrorists from Senegal, from Mali, from Niger. In your so-called one Nigeria, and you're a Nigerian, and you're proud to be a Nigerian. Uh, people with such mindset, we are those that allowed the white man to come in to take over our land. To take over our land. And um, have you all re read the report? Have you all read it? Uh, are people tried anyway? A plane crashed in Abuja. The U.S. ambassador wrote a, a goodwill message to Nigeria. That same ambassador is there, and the army is attacking Olo. She never said anything. You care the same thing. Because they know who we are. More than we do ourselves. They know who we are. They don't want Biafra to come. They represent darkness. They want darkness to prevail. They want you to be unemployed. They want our women to be going about and being useless by these idiots. They want you to be riding Okada after having your PhD. 
The British High Commissioner and the USA Ambassador, that is all they do. They want you to continue to suffer. They give them money from the zoo. They bribe them. Who says a white person doesn't take bribe? They take bribe even more than black people. U.S. Ambassador, taking money from Nigeria not to speak the truth. You're commiserating with them over the death of murderers who died in a plane crash, and many of them, many more will die. Come on, bomb you again. One of your planes will also go down. You, all of you will die. You have not learned anything yet. Those that confronted IPOB, all of them, from Buhari to the last one, where are they today? To July, they're all dead. You confront this great family, you will die in the process of it. U.S. ambassador is a woman. And I, in life, I used to think that women are more, uh, they have more empathy. They are like mothers, you know. And, uh, you know, they feel they have human, they have that motherly, compassionate feeling for the suffering of humanity. They send a British High Commissioner who is a woman, a U.S. ambassador who is a woman, and these two people are just there, what, even under their watch, the slaughter and killing of the innocent has tripled. Plane crash. So you want to come, so your money will keep flowing. The U.S. ambassador, I'm talking to you, so your money will keep coming. A white person who is compromised. You receive, you come to Africa, wretched poor Africa. You take bribe from a very corrupt government in order to sweep human rights abuses under the carpet. And you are an ambassador. Is that your job? Is that what you can? You deposited you to Nigeria to be collecting money and watching people being slaughtered by terrorists? Let me hear any of you again talk nonsense about Boko Haram or say we are going to provide support to help fight Boko Haram. Then she never said anything when people bomb fighter jets and the helicopter gunships came to Allah. They know where the bandits are in the north. They never went to the bandits in the north. They are in Olu killing innocent people. And you as an ambassador, you said nothing. Absolutely nothing. And you are an ambassador. An ambassador. There is heavy gunshot and explosion in Medugri. Hey, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Anybody, if you're if you're a Biafra, you're in the north. If you die there, you are a necessary casualty in this effort. Because the only only an idiot will be there. Fulani are killing uh, Hausa. They are so-called Hausa Fulani. How about you? Stay now, stay in the north. They said it's the breaking news coming out now. Odom Nkechineke is uh, writing on Facebook that explosions and gunshots in Medjugorje now. People are revolting everywhere. In office, I told you the you see Somalia. So some of you will be begging for visa to go to Somalia. You will, you beg for visa, and so Somalia Somalia will say no. That's how evil. That's how bad Nigeria will become. How many years ago did I warn you? You thought it's a joke. People don't know what. If, I told if you know what is good for you, just quietly give me Biafra. Let me go. If you keep saying no, 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 God, the God I serve will destroy all. All of you will be destroyed. All of you. Is it not happening before your eyes? Mad people everywhere. Alu Raid. Army confirms airstrikes. Arrest 20 IPOB members. They just go to houses and they pick up people. They say, that we are no, no IPOB family member was arrested. There, there, there is something evil. There is something satanic about a black person. You just see somebody walking on the street, as they did in Abba today. You just uh, start doing you know, from jumping them and arresting them for no reason. Because you were humiliated. I thought you said you had uh, raided their camp and uh, 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 they gave money to them. You know, brown envelope journalism in the zoo, no investigation. They wrote their usual junk. Army said, uh, Where? Where is the army in the bush? Where? Let army go and take pictures inside the bush, you know. Let them go and do a video inside the bush. The place they claim they have uh, retaken from, from ESN. Go and do a video from that place. Let us see you. You go there they will pick your flesh in pieces and put it in a bag liars and deceivers the army came out today to confirm that they carried up airstrikes in in Olo. army confirms airstrikes in Olo, but be peaceable you know people think that it is uh, we, uh, i wake up one day and i hate somebody no 
You have to be a child of Lucifer. We are going to. But some of you are black, so you don't reason very well. So I, I, I will forgive some of you. Some of you that still follow BBC, but I forgive you out of your ignorance and your stupidity. BBC was instituted to make you amenable to this wave of Fulani conquest coming your way. BBC will can never serve you. BBC can never serve you. Not in a trillion years. Never, ever, ever. It can never, ever happen. They hate you with a passion. They despise you. They don't like Biafra. The reason why they, they do not like Biafra is because they know that Biafra is the light of the world. That is the reason why they did everything possible to cover their murderous tracks after the war. They know what they are doing. BBC well, is not a news organization. It is a propaganda machinery that serves new colonialist interest, or should I say new colonial interest in Iboland. Their job is to prepare you for the takeover and for the rape of your daughters and your mothers. They are evil. BBC claim that they are objective and credible news outlet. People on the ground, we circulated videos everywhere of the army shooting from a helicopter gunship. In our law, people, somebody was speaking evil, saying, look at how they have come, look at them shooting, shooting. People, children are crying. A news organization of the size and stature of BBC came out to say that nothing like that ever happened. Let us say it's a mistake. Why have they not retracted this very lie? Until today, now the army came out to say we struck in all. And tomorrow now, some of you will go to BBC. Oh, dear me. And on that note, of course, we have come to the end of this, I believe, electrifying lecture today. As I said to you, every two days we'll be live on air. Unless there is an intervening circumstance that may, that may prevent that from happening. But as always, for those who do not know, we have nothing else except Biafra. This pursuit of freedom, that is why to us, to us, in this very noble family, the greatest family on the face of this very, this very IPOB that changed the brain of 200 million people. Biafra to us is a religion. Biafra is, therefore, our religion. Here on radio, Biafra is where we worship because Elohim is our God. From me, from here, it is good evening.